Hey, what's up there, YouTubers? It's me again, Brian, aka Gamer55551. And I am back with a video review. And for this review, we're going to be taking a look at the game The Ghouls and Goblins Resurrection that is on the Nintendo eShop for the Nintendo Switch. The game is also going to be on sale on the PS4, Xbox One, and PC via Steam on. June 1st though, it's mean there's no change in the release date of that game though. And if you're interested in my interested in any gameplay footage of me playing the game though, I'll have a link down in the description down below, or you can click on the card that will appear up on this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. So before the term Dark so for Dark Souls or Souls-like games ever existed, back during the 80s and 90s though, there were games like the Ninja Gaiden series to even, although the Ninja Gaiden did see a resurgent on, you know, the Xbox and the PS3 and we're getting the Master Collection and all that stuff, but we, we at back then though we had a, we, games like Ninja Gaiden and also one called the Ghouls and Ghosts or Ghosts and Goblins series though. This was a series developed by Capcom, which basically had you play as Arthur as you battle the uh, Arthur the Knight as you battle the horror of the undead to save the princess. It was a very difficult and challenging game though. Though it it, it was basically one of those fun and but frustrated type of the game, and yet despite that. It basically is considered a classic by, for many folks. It, we've seen it on also multiple systems, from the Sega Genesis to the NES, Super NES, arcades, and so and so forth. Even we saw some of the games ported over to the uh, PSP, to even some of a spin-off with basically the early 2000s um, Maximo series, Maximo's Ghost of Glories, and Maximo versus the Army of Zin and all that stuff. So it was kind of interesting to hear that basically Capcom was resurrecting one of resurrecting the Ghost and Goblin series though, and particularly not only coming to the Nintendo Switch, but also running on the RE engine, the same the engine that was introduced in Resident Evil 7 back in 2017, and has since then become a very popular engine and all that stuff. And we've seen a lot of games run on it from the monsters from Monster Hunter Rise on the Switch to Devil May Cry 5. So now we got it, and so now it's interesting to see how this game does on the Nintendo Switch. And I will say though, um, it still maintains some of the gameplay, which can be good and bad depending on what some people, if some people may or may not like. But I will say, um, it's definitely nice to see the series, um, make a comeback though. So why don't we get started with the pros and cons, and we'll start off first with the pros, and we'll start off first with the gameplay. Um, the gameplay, the best way to describe it, as I mentioned before, it's tough but enjoyable, or should I say, fun and frustrated at the same time. This is a very, not an easy game to get into in general, though. It's sort of like what Dark Souls is. Like that, it's not an easy game, or the Souls-like games. It's not an easy game to get into, but if you're up to the challenge, you'll definitely enjoy the game, though. It's a classic 2D going from point A to point B. At the end of each level, you fight a boss and all, and basically, you basically pick up different varieties of weapons, like the lance or the knife, which to me is the best weapon, the crossbow, which is the second best weapon, and other assessments, other weapons to pick up as you battle your way across the level. You'll also run into basically hidden secrets such as treasure chests, might drop an item, might drop armor, extra points, or if you're unlucky, you might have a wizard who basically will cast a spell that can leave you completely defenseless and all. Sometimes they'll turn you into a frog and all that, though. But what's interesting is they added some new features for the gameplay in Ghouls um, and Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. Some of the stuff they added is um, a two-player mode, though so yet I have tried this, you have to try this mode. You can basically have a second player that can help Arthur um, in the levels, though. Um, you also have a difficulty setting where you can play it as as basically from the easiest difficulty to basically the hardest. The easiest one being that you have unlimited lives and when you die you don't go back to the checkpoint. You could start with start off where you left off. Some might argue that's invincibility mode. Some people have different debates about that. To some of the difficulties where Arthur could take more hits before he loses his armor and all. And obviously you have the harder settings as well. You also have the ability to basically um, replay levels, which can come in handy if you bas basically need to. Maybe if you miss the secret and you want to go back and try to get that secret and all. To basically upgrades, where you now can basically upgrade Arthur by collecting... I believe it's these kind of fairies where you basically 
use them at a base called an umbra tree. Apologize for not saying them correctly. These, this where you basically can upgrade Arthur's arsenal and spells. So you can upgrade to have um, different spells to even my personal favorite, and I think this could be is a lifesaver. The ability to carry more than one weapon, though, which can definitely come in handy, especially if you want to hold on to a certain weapon you feel comfortable with. And maybe you want to use, maybe look at maybe getting the other weapons. Like, personally, I hold on to the knife. I think that's the easiest weapon. I like that weapon, though, to compare to the other weapons. But that's my um, preference and taste. So they added some new st new stuff into Ghosts and Goblins and Resurrection, which definitely does make the game um, certainly... Um, on one hand, it will make it enjoyable for those who may have a hard time with the difficulty, though. While on the other hand, it doesn't doesn't prevent people who want to go through like a really really tough challenge and believe me this game can be challenging though the next thing I do want to talk about is the music and I will say though that the music in the game is really good you hear some of the classic tunes from the Ghosts and Goblins series but then again you also hear some new new music as well for some reason and maybe this is just me and all but it definitely gives off a little bit of a um Danny Elfman vibe to it. And that's not basically a bad thing, though. I mean, if you've heard um, music from Danny Elfman, particularly if you watch any of the Tim Burton movies in the past, though, you could um, you definitely you could definitely get the idea, though. I mean, so it definitely gives up a little bit of that vibe. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. At least that's how I see it in, ter in terms of the music. And finally, last but not least, is the visuals. And this one has been debatable for some folks out there um to me this is both a pro and a con though i will say from a visual standpoint um it definitely looks good um i definitely like the um i de definitely think the art design isn't necessarily bad i see what they were trying to go with sort of like a you know like a medieval um sort of storybook type of approach and that certainly isn't necessarily um a bad thing and a lot of the enemies are designed um very nice and all. So from a visual standpoint, it doesn't look bad as well, especially since we now know it runs at 1080p when docked, I believe 720p when undocked, and running at 60 frames per second, which definitely isn't bad um, either. <clears throat> okay, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll get to part two, which are the cons. So we'll take a little break, and we will be right back. Okay, and we are back with part two of my video review of Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection for the Nintendo Switch. In case anyone forgot though, or, or accidentally forget, the game is coming to the PS4, Xbox One, PC, and PC via Steam on June 1st, barring any kind of change in the release date or anything like that. So now that I gave you the pros, why don't we get started with the cons, and there are two cons I could think of. One depends on your view, and one it's kind of obvious in a certain way. The first one has to do with the visuals. And as I mentioned before, I talked about the visuals and how I thought the game didn't look really bad or the choice of direction that Capcom with in, in regards to the visuals for Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. And I still stand behind that. That said, at the same time though, I'm not a huge fan of the choice that they made in terms of the visuals though. I would have liked to see it basically look, I'm, I mean, it may look like maybe like what Super Ghouls and Ghosts was, but maybe in a much, you know, like a much upgraded visuals on that, not the storybook kind of approach. Again, I don't think it looks bad. It's just that I'm not a, I don't agree with the approach Capcom made with, in terms of the visuals, though. It's the same way that I view the, the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, though. I don't hate the visuals on that game. I think it looks good and all, and I think it does show that, um, it does show that video games can be an art form, though, and I certainly don't buy those who will never play that game because of the visuals. I think that's going a little bit overboard. But at the same time, I don't 100% agree with Nintendo going with that approach, considering I prefer the kind of approach they did with Ocarina of Time to or Majora's Mask to even um, Twilight Princess, which had more of a, a, a an anime style of approach. Again, that comes down to one's preference and taste. Um, does it prevent me from enjoying this game? No, not really, though. I just don't. Uh, I'm just not a huge fan of the visual approach Capcom made with Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. 
And last but not least, and this one is pretty obvious, and this one's going to be depending on how much patience you have, is that is the, the game is the difficulty. And Ghosts and Goblins is well known for its di difficulty. That and games like, say, the Ninja Gaiden, though. As I said before or in the past, this was like before Dark Souls ever entered the picture, or Souls-like games and all that stuff. And some folks might be turned off on the difficulty, though. I mean, yes, you can play the game in easy mode. That does make the game more tolerable, though. But even on the e easy difficulty, though, it could provide somewhat of a challenge, especially Especially if you're basically trying to get everything though, like for example, if you play the game on the easiest difficulty though, you won't die in the game and you can sort of resurrect your character. However, if you're trying to collect everything, especially like those fairies that you're supposed to, that you want to use to upgrade your character, um, if you miss one, you won't be able to get it back unless you restart the level and all that stuff. Unlike some of the other difficulties where you can restart from the last checkpoint. Which can also be a pain in the ass at the time. Especially if you're trying to overcome a certain area, certain part of the level where you basically may be struggling a bit. So it, it, the difficulty, even on the easiest one, can be, though tolerable, can be a bit challenging. On the harder difficulty, that's definitely going to be brutal i'm sure I'm, I'm not saying there are those who will be willing to play that difficulty but bear in mind this is not an easy game um to get into for for some folks so the difficulty might turn some people off it may not turn everyone off but it, it might turn off some folks so overall ghosts and goblins resurrection in my opinion is what i would consider a both a fun but also a frustrated game at the same time. The gameplay is still enjoyable even though it's tough, um, even though the game is known to be tough and brutal at times though. I like some of the ideas that they added like a new two player mode, difficult setting, and the upgrade ability which is definitely nice though. Um, and the music definitely sounds really good in the game though. I will say the visuals, I'm still mixed on it though. I don't hate it but I'm not a big fan of the approach Capcom made with the visuals and all that. Some folks are okay with it, some folks aren't though. Um, I mean, like I said, I don't hate it, I just don't agree with the decision though. And being this is a diff being this is a fun and frustrated game though, some f the difficulty might turn some folks off, but it won't turn everybody off though. If you have the patience, or if you've played on um, Souls-like games before, then you'll probably enjoy Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection though. It's nice that Capcom definitely brought this series back, and it's also nice to see another game running on the RE engine on the Nintendo Switch though. Here's a hoping though that this is the start of maybe other games coming back, like why not the Strider series, I would like to see that come back. Why not, with the RE engine, why not bring back Bionic Commando? I know we had the 360 and PS3 Bionic Commando, but with the RE engine, why not bring that series back? With uh, Bring that um, series back indeed. Why not the Dino Crisis series? Maybe get that running on the RE engine. Why not do a sequel to Dragon Dogma? Have that run on the RE engine. Or one I would like to see make a comeback is the... Maximo, the Ghosts and Glories, or the, and the Army is in. I would be down if they were to remake that game and bring it over to, say, like the Nintendo Switch, or better yet, do a third one and maybe have a crossover where Maximo meets Arthur and all that stuff. That would be really great if they could bring that series um, back. Also, Final Fight would be great, especially with the RE engine, though there's some rumors about that. So, um, I will say it's Great that they brought this series back. Here's to hoping we see other series make a comeback. And I gotta tell you, the RE engine is still impresses me, especially with a lot of games that are using it though. So my overall, I would say it's a fun and frustrated game though. It might turn off some people though, but if you're willing to withstand the difficulty that the Ghosts and Goblins um, series is known for, then you'll probably um, enjoy um, Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection. Whether it's worth picking up the Switch or not, Will depend on your view. If you're okay with the portability aspect, then if portability is a big deal, pick it up on the Switch. If you rather it play it on, if you rather play it, if the Switch is in your really your main system or you really don't care about portability, then you could wait for when the PS4, Xbox One, or PC uh, Steam comes out. But either way, if you're a fan of fun, frustrated games, though, um, it's worth then Ghost and Goblins Resurrection is worth a look. <clears throat> Okay, uh, this concludes my video review of Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection for the Nintendo Switch. 
And again, these are my opinion. What are yours? What are your thoughts about Ghosts and Goblins and Resurrection? Are you glad Capcom brought that game back? Are you pressed with the fact that it's running on the RE engine? The same RE engine that powered games like Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8 as well. Um, do you Would you like to see Capcom? Do you think Capcom should bring back other Lost franchises like Dino Crisis, Strider, Maximo? And do you think they should use the RE engine on those games? Do you agree with what I said in this video? Do you disagree? Do you have a difference of opinion? Um, as always, sound off on the comment section below. Let me know what you think. And if you do like this video, I hope you hit the like button. I would appreciate it. And I hope you do subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you do, make sure you hit the bell icon for notifications of any new videos that I put up. Also, feel free to share this video if you want to. And feel free to donate to my channel if you like. You could do it through PayPal me or Patreon. Links will be in the description of this video, assuming you're watching this on YouTube. And I will see you again next time when I do another video. Hopefully that'll be soon. Until then, from Southern California, I wish you all a good day then. Bye!